Hi, this is Kelly from Essex Ham and welcome to Foundation Online, getting you started with amateur radio. Hello, this is Pete from the Foundation Online course with a short video on EMF, electromagnetic fields, and how to complete the assessment. First off, what are the rules regarding EMF? Well, the amateur radio licence conditions changed in May 2021. A new section was added all about the requirements to comply with EMF legislation. It's formed part of the licence since May 2021 and examinable from September 2022. In essence, the rule is fairly straightforward. It's to make sure that your amateur radio transmissions do not exceed the limits set by the ICNIRP. That's the International Commission on Non-Ionising Radiation Protection. They set international limits about RF exposure. The changes to the Ofcom licence apply to radiated power over 6.1 watts ERP or 10 watts EIRP. And of course these rules don't just apply to radio amateurs, they apply to all users of the radio spectrum. Whether that's mobile phone masts, broadcasters, taxi companies, whoever, anyone going over 6.1 watts ERP would need to comply. The wording of the licence is on the screen now. The licensee shall only establish, install, modify or use relevant radio equipment if the total electromagnetic field exposure levels produced by the licensee's on-site radio equipment do not exceed the basic restrictions in the relevant tables for general public exposure, identified in the ICNIRP guidelines, in any area where a member of the general public is, or can be expected to be present, when transmissions are taking place. So let's look at the details of how straightforward it is to comply with this new license condition. The easiest way is to perform an EMF assessment. Ofcom has released a calculator, but we strongly recommend you take a look at the RSGB's EMF calculator. This is available in two formats, either as a downloadable Excel spreadsheet or as a web-based tool. To perform the calculations, you need some basic information. You need to work out what band you're transmitting on, what mode you're transmitting, whether that's a data mode or AM or FM or SSB, the power that you'll be putting into your antenna, the percentage that you'll be transmitting for over six minutes. So for instance, when you're thinking about your communications, you probably spend 50% of your time transmitting and 50% listening. So therefore your percentage transmitted over six minutes would be 50%. You then look at the feeder. What type of feeder are you using and how long is the run of the feeder between your transmitter and the antenna? Then you've got the antenna type and how high up your antenna is. Let's take a look at an example. Here you can see a picture of a standard collinear antenna on top of someone's roof. For this example, let's assume the amateur is using the two meter band. They are using FM voice as the mode and a power of 50 watts. They're transmitting for half the time and listening for half the time, so their transmit percentage is 50%. They're using RG213 feeder and a 10 meter run. The antenna type is a one meter tall collinear and the height from the base of the antenna to the ground is 8.5 meters, which is just over a two story building. All of the information is then fed into the RSGB calculator. And that comes up with an advisory that the Ofcom requirement is for members of the public to be two metres away from the antenna. In the example provided here, people are 6.7 metres away from the antenna, so very clearly outside of that two metre requirement. In this particular case, a requirement to be two metres away and the separation is 6.7 metres, so no problems at all. All that's needed is to save a copy of the results just in case they're required at a later date and your job is done. Of course you have to repeat this for any other bands that you're using and any other antennas that you've got. So if you've got lots of different antennas and lots of different bands then you might end up with a few pieces of paper. If for any reason you don't comply then you do need to look at your antenna system. Maybe you need to raise the height or increase the separation between the antenna and the members of the public 
or operate a different mode which perhaps uses less power, or indeed reduce your power. Several things that you can do. So as you've seen, running the basic assessment and complying with the Ofcom rules is fairly straightforward. You can get access to the calculators and more information at rsgb.org.uk forward slash EMF. We also have some information available on our website, sxham.uk forward slash EMF. That's all for this short video on EMF assessments and complying with the license conditions. We hope you found that. This feature was brought to you by Essex Ham.